Okay, I'm going to show today a very specific feature with PFSense. Now, a lot of kinds we have this set up for is load balancing slash failover, mostly for the failover part. Uh, internet's pretty critical. We love to put things in the cloud, which means they're not on premise. The servers aren't in-house and we need to make sure that we always have solid internet connections. And that means usually two of them. That way, if either one of them fail, you're good to go. So usually have a primary high speed connection and a backup connection, maybe that's lesser speed, but it'll still get you online. So I'm gonna show you how to set that up with PFSense. There's a couple specific things you need to do. First, make sure you got enough interface cards. So this actually has all the interfaces already on it. So we have a WAN, LAN, and I have one more available port on here. So we're gonna go ahead and click add. So you need at least, like I said, three interfaces uh, to make this happen. And you can add a lot more than two. If you have five internet connections, you can set them up for redundancy as well. So we're gonna save that, go to the interface, we're gonna enable it, and we're gonna call it WAN2. And now we need to give it an IP address. And it needs a gateway. call this WAN2 gateway. Now we're not making this a default gateway. This is our backup connection. And I'll show you why we're doing that here. So this is WAN2 gateway. Go down here, click save, apply. So now we have WAN, LAN, and WAN2, and they're all up. And I got them on two separate networks because I have this set up in with VirtualBox, but it's still separated by network by network card. So there's now two different gateways we have under routing. This is the default gateway, the 192.168.3.1, and this is the WAN2 2.1 with two separate ones on here. Now, the next step from here is to create a group because you have to group the gateways together in order to make this work. So the next step is go to gateway group, add, and we're gonna call it just gateway group, now, you can set priority routing if you're using this for load balancing. It doesn't necessarily matter. That way, if one of them has a certain amount of latency on it, it'll jump over to the other. Uh, and you can just set them at the same tier, but you could actually control this or round robin it for however you want to manage the load balancing. So we're gonna say packet loss or high latency. This is the gateway group failover. So we're taking this group, this group, leaving them at tier one and hitting save apply. Now it's a failover group. Now this is the important part to have the failover group to make it so if one goes down based on latency packet loss it goes okay I can switch over to the other one. You can go into the advanced system tuning uh, for each of these and set exactly how much packet loss. I've always found the default to be fine. It hits the threshold and it drops. So then we're going to go to the last piece. I don't know why this isn't checked by default but if you got to go to advanced miscellaneous i don't know why it's under here enable default gateway switching this is important if you don't do this you have to reset the default gateway which means it's not exactly a failover it's a two connections and you have to manually switch them back and forth so this is not on there but this is also where you would set some of the load balancing information on here if you were going to use them for load balancing but generally speaking uh, people just want to use it for the failover on there so we're going to do a trace path here and it's using the default gateway of 3.1 right here. So then we'll bring this over and we can ping. And I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the network cable. So we'll slide these out of the way. And right here where it says all of them are up, I'm gonna go in here and disconnect our default gateway. And I'm disconnecting it now. We can see it stopped pinging. It's going to take a second to realize it's down. Refresh the page here. You can see that this is down. And it's now back up because when we do a trace path, we're now on the other gateway. We were on this one. Now we're on, it switched over to this gateway. And if we pull the ping back up, we can ping again. Now ICMP, because it's, sending a consistent packet. It keeps trying to send over the same gateway, so I had to start and stop the packets. Uh, but you can see it switches over fairly quick. I think it takes about 
I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, depending on how you have it tuned before it goes, okay, that one's down. I'm gonna switch over to the next one. Now, uh, putting it back up, I'm gonna show you here. So right now we're on this gateway, so we'll do one more trace. So it's going over the 2.1 gateway, our second WAN connection, which because this is one that's up and this one's down, we're gonna plug the network cable back in. Network cable's plugged back in now. and immediately switches right back to the other gateway. Like I said, generally switches really fast between them. If there's persistent connections, it will come up and drop some of those because if they were routing over there, they need to be reestablished. And you gotta remember you're switching IP addresses. So this is gonna break some websites and you may have to re-authenticate and re-log back in. But for the most part, this works really well uh, for doing switching. If you're not there, it does it automatically. And when it comes back up, it goes the other way. The only kind of complaint I have, I guess, is you don't really notice, if you don't notice that it did it, you don't know that the internet connection's down right away. Um, so you may not know to call the provider. So if you have two failures, you have a pretty big problem. But this is, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, it's really just a few clicks there. You add the interface, put in the secondary IP information for the secondary interface, create a gateway group, set a failover policy under the routing here, and check that box under miscellaneous. And that's it. Really simple. They're really easy to do uh, setting up for uh, failover. It doesn't, doesn't take a whole lot of uh, configuration or settings. Thanks.